Hey, what's up? It's Matt. In this episode of MPTV, we are in Highland, Utah. Getting ready to hit the ski slopes this week. But first, we're with Tyler at Pizza Pie Cafe. You know it. This is us. What's so, going on? Oh, just just living the COVID dream right now, right? <laughs> just the way every restaurant is. Yep. So, so yeah. give us a tour. Yeah, for sure. Tell us the story. Tell us yeah, about the restaurant. Sure. Come on. You're good. So, so, looking this way, right? We'll have him turn around, swing yep. around us. So we, so Pizza Pie Cafe, we've been a buffet for most of the life of it. They started out as just a regular pizza restaurant, right? And just serving table service. And then they realized they opened a buffet like a lot of people do. Yep. Uh, opened an afternoon buffet and it caught on really quick. And so they started moving and started realizing that no one wanted food to their table. And so they just started serving the buffet okay. all day long. And it's been going, I think it's been about probably eight years. Eight I think years. the company's been around for almost 15. Okay. So about half the time. Uh, yeah, so they did that, and this is what brings us to this. You got pizza, pasta, and salad for days. Now, you so. worked with the company and then bought this location? I did, yep, yep. I worked for the company for seven or eight years, give or take, and then worked with them, had this midlife, mid-20s crisis, I guess you could say, <laughs> mid-20s crisis, and started realizing, okay, what do I actually want to do with my life? Because um, I had been thought, thought about going to school for a long time, and then realized, I, I, this is not for enough for me. I didn't do well in school. Most, most I feel like most restaurant people don't do yep. well in school. That's me why too. I restaurants. Most marketing people yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. Um, so because of that, um, I started thinking about different avenues that I wanted to do. Started a couple different businesses and realized that wasn't what I wanted to do. And so I talked to the owners of the whole franchise and said, hey, I'm planning on leaving and starting my own restaurant. Then he came to me and said, hey, well, how about we go in together on something? And I was like, okay, that's fine. And then Push came to shove, I started realizing how hard it is to open your own restaurant, right? Which you kind of, you think you know when you're a general manager, but yeah. you don't really know, right? Um, and so I started, after that point, I was just like, you know what, like, what if I just do a franchise with one of these guys? Because I already know the company, I know the owner super well. And yeah, so yeah, long story short, that's how it pretty much came about. We were going to do some in Arizona, but then this one was available, so we came here. And cool. Well, give, my give here, us a so. tour. Tell yeah, us what we got sure. here. Yep. So, um, we got the salad bar. Um, salad yeah, and, I, and I noticed on the sign it says uh, salad, subs, pizzas. Uh, pizza, pasta, and salad. Pizza, pasta, salad. Yeah, yeah, I had cool. never seen, like, the salad caught my attention uh -huh, because uh -huh. it's got to be a good marketing ploy from for the sure. standpoint that Definitely. people yeah. don't want a pizza, what else they have. Yep. You never see yep. that, though. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and that's one of the things where um, that I've told people before is when I work here, they, the kids come for the pizza, the parents come for the salad yeah. and pasta. Um, and so the fun thing with salad bars, uh, our salad bar I say is one of the best salad bars in town. Um, this one's not huge, but in a lot of our locations, and I like this location especially, you've got a lot of stuff to choose from. A lot of people, I feel like you go to other buffets and it's, there's a lot of stuff to choose from, but a lot of it's pretty canned and yeah. not very fresh. But we've got all fresh ingredients that we take care of for ourselves, and we do a lot of the cutting and dicing and getting it out here for everybody. Uh, so salad bars, salad bars are huge yep. up for the parents. Um, and then got the piece, all the pizzas. I did not see a cookie dough pizza. Yep, cookie dough pizza right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yep. You know what I'll be eating in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Yeah, so our Oreo pizza is the one everyone loves. That's okay. the, that is the numero uno one. When anyone, anyone comes here, they always get Oreo. We go through about three times as many of those as we do pretty much any other. Are all the pizza. pizzas the same at all of the locations? Uh, no, so depending on where they're at, depending on what people like, we actually okay. have a lot of variances. So we got about probably about 30 pizzas to choose from. Uh, most, 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 of the buffet, most of the pizza pies have anywhere from 18 to 30 on their buffet, okay. just depending on how many buffets they got. So we keep about 18, give or take, depending on the time of day. But yeah, so we try to cater it to what people are liking. So if we put a new one out there for a while, see if people are eating it, and then we'll rotate it on there. But okay. yeah, yep. Garlic nuts go like crazy, like every other pizza restaurant, yep. right? <laughs> yep. Then we've got pasta um, bar. We've got the pasta bar. Yep, pasta bar. This is, I think this is the adults, but kids actually eat a lot of this too. Um, this is a huge one that. Uh, it's a customization. Everyone likes buffets because you can do whatever you yeah. want. But a lot of people like the pasta because we've got nine or ten different pastas to choose from. And you got all the different sauces. And we do make most of our sauces ourselves. So, okay. yeah, that's, that's our thing is what we do. Pizza, pasta, and salad. Um, fun thing, another thing about the pizza buffet, to jump back there, is uh, people request pizzas. It's not just what we have on there. It's like, we'll okay. make any. If we have the ingredients, we'll make it for you. So, that's a pretty cool thing. People so, yeah, so, I, so, I can time. walk up and say, hey, yeah. I want the... I want the uh, the orange MP pizza. Yep. And say it's, it's a firefighter Rick with this, this, and this on it. Yep, yep. And then you can say, hey, can I get one out that has olives and this on top of it? Or if we have the ingredients, we'll do it. So we have a lot of people say, hey, I want this one, but with extra of everything. And so we'll just load it up and we have a request, customer request spot that we do. And people like that a lot. It's just that, because at a buffet, oftentimes I feel like you're kind of like, whatever's out there is what you get. Yep. Um, but the fun thing here is we tell people like, hey, you can, you can request whatever you want here. We'll make it for you. As long as we got the stuff for it, we'll do it. So. Cool. Yeah. 
that works. Well, that's us. Nice. Well, let's go sit down and, and talk okay. a little more business. Sounds like a good plan to me. I couldn't pass up the cookie <laughs> dough and the Oreo. So while That's we're right. talking, I'm going to ask yeah. you questions that okay. require long answers so I can eat <laughs> a little. Fair enough. I'll, but I'm, I'm known to be Gabby. So the the reason I really wanted to grab this, though, is I think one of the biggest missed opportunities in a lot of restaurants, sure. especially pizza, is selling dessert. Okay. Now, you're a buffet pizza. You've yeah. got a little adv advantage. Like, I actually had a piece of the brownie pizza earlier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess it's a pizza of the month, I think, or pizza of the yeah. week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had it before I had pepperoni. <laughs> so a lot of yeah. restaurants don't have that. Dessert's the sure. end. Yep. So do you guys do anything to sell this type? I mean, is there anything on your end? Like, are people taking these to go? Are you doing special ones? For sure, yeah. So what? oftentimes what we'll do is we'll deliver them to businesses a lot, just as a free, like, hey, how's it going? And we just stop in and give them an Oreo pizza or a cookie dough pizza. Um, oh, yeah. my gosh. It is delicious. We make it in house, so it's great. The cookie, like I was telling you, the cookie dough is delicious because we make it here. So that is good. unbelievable. Yep, it's heaven. Everyone loves it. That's honestly, that really is. So I really do think that's why most of the kids stick around. But then you get the few, the few of you's out there and, and me that love the cookies and love, love sugar. We we eat it all. So hold on, you said something that is like it gets me in the heart. You yeah. said you guys go out and do grassroots marketing. Yep. Yep, for so sure. you take this to local rest, local businesses down the street, yep. the mortgage company, the car dealer. Yep. Stop just by. Stop and say, how's it going? I'm Tyler. Yeah, it's, all, it's all it is, just a relationship visit. Okay. So it's like, hey, when you need me, we, we so one thing we do in marketing that we haven't done a lot right now because there's not events going on, but Pizza Pie is really helpful with other uh, companies growing. Uh, something that I've, I've really, I've, I love helping other businesses grow. It's like mm -hmm. something I've always, always liked doing. And so something we'll do is our... Our pizza attracts lots and lots of people when we go to events. If Pizza Pie's there and we're handing out a bunch of free stuff, we have a line that's a half mile long, one of the biggest lines at the at the conference or whatever. Like, what do they call those then? Whatever. The like event, festivals whatever. Yeah, festivals, yeah. all that stuff. Um, so we it's been so lines. long since we've done yeah, them. We, we don't remember what they are, exactly. <laughs> so we we go and do a lot of that. So we'll go to this, and then we say, hey, you know, this doctor that's on the, a new doctor that just got out of med school trying to start his own practice, we're like, hey, come hop on with us and let's go to this thing and we'll partner up, we'll both pay for the booth, yada yada. Oftentimes they just pay for it and they pay for the booth, we come up and we hand out free pizza and we hand out free coupons and do all sorts of fun stuff. But that doctor then is standing there talking to everyone in the line, handing out his business cards, yeah. developing those relationships. And so we had one in particular that um, in the last store that I worked in that I spent a lot of time with one doctor in particular. And he, as far as I know, he's one of the bigger ones in the area. Obviously this is a big area so it's hard to tell, but but he started out and he, there literally was like five employees in his office, a nice small place. But when I left after, I think he had been open for about three or four years when I left the area, um, everyone you talked to said, oh yeah, like, oh, Dr. Simpson, Dr. Simpson, that's, that's where I'm going, that's what I do. And, and he attributes a lot of that to being there with us and spending that time with us and being together because he's like, you guys draw my crowd of people. Yeah. That's who's a family practice. Yeah. And so it's just like, he's a pediatrician, so we have kids galore that come here. And so it worked out really well, just a mutual business venture with everyone. We do that, used to do that a lot. We haven't been able to yeah. do it as much now, but that's why we deliver free pizza. Well, so. it's a missed component too. You know, yep. I, my background, you might not know this, but for 10 years we owned a boat and RV dealership. Uh -huh, for sure. And I'm not a fisherman, mm -hmm. so my dad, sorry dad, you try to be a fisherman, we're terrible. <laughs> my brother's got a little more in him than us. Yeah. But none of us were fishermen. We bought this dealership, and I'll never forget it because I'm at the Dayton Boat Show, mm -hmm. and this guy walks up and he's like, hey, can you sponsor our fishing tournament? Yeah. And I'm like, what? what's a fishing tournament? Yeah. Like, clue me in here. And he said, how well. Do you, how do you tournament? Yeah, I'm like yeah. trying to figure this out. He goes, well, we get together on Saturday mornings at 6 a.m. And I'm like, okay, you lost me there. And he said, then we, uh, we have, you go out for six to eight hours, you come back, whoever has the biggest catch of five fish weight-wise, yeah. yeah. uh, above 12 What's inches wins. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, okay that's interesting. So yeah. what do you want? And he's like, anything. So I said, we'll give you some gift cards. And so yep. I asked some of our employees, I said, we had started hiring outdoorsmen. And they're like, oh, they're huge. Fishing tournaments are big. There's literally yeah. 30 or 40 every Saturday Jeez. all around the city. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so I said, okay, take me to one. I got to see this. Yeah, yeah, and you see why. And so we go crazy. there. And there's a hundred boats, mm -hmm. which is 200 people, and there's no businesses there. And I'm like, hold on. So I'm at a place where there's a hundred boats, <laughs> there's 200 people in boats. Yeah. They all have fishing gear, boat parts. They have boats. They have all this stuff. And we know that that crowd's one of the well, heaviest buying crowds. <laughs> the ne the <laughs> next year we sponsor. I made a rule: we'll sponsor any tournament. Mm -hmm. The following year we had 30 grand in gift cards we gave out to tournaments. Nice. And we figured out we were like in 1,400 tournaments in that year, uh -huh. and uh -huh. it drove sales. But I used to crack up because. 
I asked other dealerships in like different cities, do you go to them? Nah, it's too much work. Yeah. It's on Saturday mornings, yeah, I don't want to mess fishing. with it. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> it, a lot of people don't take the time and effort yep. to do that. Yep. And from the restaurant side, there's a restaurant right next to my house that closed down. Their brand's gone now, but yeah. they had this location that closed out of the four. Uh, it was called Flip Daddy's. Uh -huh. And they went out of business, and I remember about two months before they went out of business, they had a new owner come in, a new CEO come in, yeah. and he had reached out because we have a common friend, said, I know you live near there, what would you do marketing-wise if you were in that store? Yeah. And he said, I trust your opinion. I said, I'd get out of your store. He <laughs> goes, what do you mean? I said, my kids go to Ryle High School. Yep. There's band competitions all the time, there's football, baseball, soccer, there's yep. everything. Flip Daddy's has never been to an event that I've been at there. Yep. And I said, yep. you're a half a mile from the from the school, and the, what's cool about where we're at is you have to go another three or four miles past them to hit another restaurant. Uh huh. Uh huh. Like so, you have you're the only person here. <laughs> you have a captive audience. Uh -huh. You've never come to a sporting event, and so that's huge getting out in the community because uh -huh. sure. that makes a difference. Yep. Yep. And that's I think that's a big thing for us um, when the company was first growing back when I saw it. They'd only been open for what, like five or six years when I had, or seven years when I hopped on. And they, that was a huge thing for them, was that was all we did, even as a general manager, um, they had us out doing a lot of that stuff. Um, and as the companies transitioned, they stopped doing a lot of that because they got their foot in the, the community. They didn't have to do as much, even though I personally agree that we need to continue to do a lot more. But yeah. as COVID goes, we'll see, <laughs> see how that goes. But yeah, I, honestly, right now, a big thing that I'm doing and pushing here is doing the best that I can to get myself out. Um, not for the sake of having more free time, but for the sake of me going and talking to more people because yeah. the more relationships I have, that's one lunch that they're buying once a month from us when it comes to a catered lunch, not yep. an actual just coming in here. To, I don't care if they come in here, in here and eat, but yep. if they'll buy catering from me, that's a $200 order I don't have to think about. You know so what we call like, those in the marketing world? I'm not sure. RGAs. What's it's a revenue generating activity. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. A lot of Makes businesses, sense. you know, revenue generating activities take, a, they take effort. Mm -hmm. They take you, okay, I gotta get out. I gotta get out of my comfort yeah. zone and go talk to people. I gotta get out and do this stuff. Yeah. But if you do those, like my me on my phone, I have an alert, I use an app called Strides, uh -huh. and it notifies me every day. Did you talk to three customers? Did you talk to three people that should be doing business with you? Did you talk to three people in the, that are influencers in your space? Yeah. And if you do that, like yeah. you, if you go down yeah. and drop in three businesses, yep. drop yep. in three doctor's offices, talk yep. to three real estate agents. Yep. And you do that every month, put them on a rotation or yep. every week, and. You're good. So. Okay, break time. Restaurant owners, you're watching MPTV, so you're obviously interested in increasing your sales and profits. But what if I told you you could eliminate the hope and pray out of your marketing? You could spend money and actually see results. You know, most marketing starts with attention, like a billboard. The problem is that attention leads nowhere. That's why we created the ROI Engine Restaurant Program. We take attention and gain huge engagement, whether it's in-store or online. We help you build a database with deep customer information that's comprised of email, cell phone, and birthday. And then we drive them into the restaurant with trackable results. Yes, results you can actually see. If you're interested and wanna have a conversation, check out restaurantmarketingthatworks.com. Worst case scenario, you get a lot of great ideas. Now back to the show. And, and I know, and I know. Model. Recently, uh -huh. we started working with. We've worked with you now for, I guess, about a year or six months. S some, yeah. yeah, six months, yeah. years, some of that. And you yeah. started. We we had a conversation and realized <laughs> that there was more of an opportunity for us to help you with finding groups of people. Yep. And so you've got yep. that going got on the now. Pizza party going on. Yep. Have you yep. have you started doing that using that when you're out and about yet? Yeah, for sure. So what we're so I've been we've had a big change in management. Anyone in the industry knows that when that happens, it takes a minute to get your feedback oh, yeah. onto you. But um, here in the next two weeks or so, what I'll start doing is on the with these leads that are coming in for getting the free pizza party. Yep. Um, I'm going to go just give that person a free pizza in the office and walk in and say, Hey, here's here's the Oreo pizza because everyone loves it. And I just walk in. I'm just going to give them a pizza and say, Hey, you want a pizza? Yada yada yada. And I walk in and then say, If any, our famous thing is you want any coupons it's pizza place, right? Yeah. Do you have any coupons? Like we got coupons for everyone. And um, then say, hey, who's in charge of catering orders? Yep. Um, and then, hey, can we get on your, can we get on your, what do they call it, your bill or whatever for yeah. your once a month schedule for yeah. getting on a catering order. And it, it, I'm sure it worked great. I haven't actually done it yet because we just started doing that yeah. a month and a half. Yeah, about a month and a half ago. Yeah, we got like 60 of them and I'm still not scared to go to the first one. Yeah. <laughs> that is. I'm really excited for that. We've been, I've been pushing. It was actually, it's really sucked right after Christmas when my managers quit and I was hoping he was going to stick around longer so I could run. He was my assistant manager. Uh, who was taking a lot of the load, so I could go out and do that stuff. But I was hoping I'd just start hitting these guys every day, but that's the idea. If we're going to hopefully, once we get that next assistant manager in here the next couple weeks, we'll just start running out and talking to people and giving yep. them free pizza and 
then the relationships go from there. So yeah, and I'll and I'll show you. That this isn't a sales presentation. This is the first time on a podcast we've done this. But and if you're listening, you're out of luck. But what this is, one thing I'm a big proponent of, and a lot of restaurants don't do this, mm -hmm. is that you've either got people you're going out to reach, yep. or you've got people that have walked in your four walls. Yep. Those yep. are the best people to get in the restaurant again. Yep. yep, they're already here. And so in this case, literally, it's simple. It's get started. It's, you know, obviously, you got to start the conversation. This is in Messenger, and there's a lot of tools out there you could be using. You don't have to use Messenger. You could use a lot of different things. But what's the name of your business? You know, I'll say our one agency, Driven Media. Spell it right. And it's telling them we're gonna randomly select a winner on the 15th very month to win a prize. What is your position? I'm the owner. Number of employees, fewer than 10, which we have a lot more than that, but I don't know why I chose that. <laughs> uh, how often do you have lunch at the office every two weeks? Put my email address, phone number, I agree to text messaging, and there we go. So now what happens in this situation is the business owner gets a notification of, hey, Matt Plapp, Driven Media Solutions, owner of the company, this many employees, they, they get lunches every, this, this frequency, yep. and you can call them. And where this came from with us was, we've always used this type of marketing in-house to help capture people in store. Yeah. But one of our clients, a brand called Apple Spice, uh, out of the Carolinas, has a salesperson on staff. They don't have a traditional dine-in restaurant. Yeah. They're to go and delivery and box orders. Yep. And every time somebody opts in, they have a person that calls. 30 minutes, uh -huh. hey, we saw you in the contest. Tell us about your company. Even yeah. if it's a consumer, yep. they call them. And they say, hey, where do you work? And they see if there's an opportunity. Yep. And it's those revenue generate activities. Yeah. Yeah. And not many establishments like yours are doing things like this. Sure. And so it's really growing that database and getting out there. Well, especially. Uh, just to throw something in there, so before I bought this location, they were gonna close it down um, because it had just been sucking <laughs> for that long, honestly. They had just been terrible customer service. They just, you looked at their reviews, it was just teenagers run this place. That was yeah. what they were known for. And so immediately I knew after my experience of being here, it's like, okay, we gotta fix the community's outlook on here, just the general community. Not just our community, but the general community. And, and this is for, since the beginning, since we bought this, this was my first original intention. It's like, you gotta go out and talk to people. Yeah. Um, because, and, Pizza Pie is a little different than like a mom and pop shop because we're kind of like in between a mom and pop shop and a franchise, yep. even though we're franchise technically. But anyways, with that, like not we, a big chain. Yeah, though. we're not a yeah. big chain. That's the word I was looking for. Um, because of that, we're we're still able to be out in the community and doing that type of thing. And I knew that that was going to fix um, a lot of that, and it really already has. Just with a little bit, right when we were starting to get time to do that, and the first time once right when COVID hit was when we were about ready to start running with it. Um, but it's still been fun because just in the little bit I've been able to do, it's, it's the people I still see every day or every couple of days yeah. coming into our restaurant or taking getting catering orders of some sort. So. Well, another thing, I don't know if yours is hooked up, so this is a note for later to talk to Tom on our team yeah. about. There's the opportunity that when that person gets a confirmation saying, mm -hmm. hey, you're entered the win, uh -huh. that they can forward it and say, by the way, forward this to your entire company or your Perfect. friends and family. Yeah. And there's a link below they can click to join the regular program. Okay. So now Perfect. those people yeah, click that idea. link, get an offer to come to the restaurant. It's kind of a double whammy. Get a friend from a friend, yep. right? Yeah. <laughs> but, but the other part, the reason I really wanted to bring that up also was the fact that you've been working with us and your program has gone okay. Yeah. It yeah. hasn't gone as good as some of our best ones. Sure. It's not dying. Yeah. And a lot of that has to do with we're a buffet in the middle yeah. of a, COVID. Middle of COVID. But so. we had a conversation. Like the one yeah. thing I've seen in business, a lot of times business owners, <laughs> don't give their vendors the chance to really come up with solutions. It's, yep. hey, we like it, we don't like it, you're fired, you're hired. Yep. You and Especially I had a conversation, <laughs> you, and, you and I had a conversation, what I applaud you always, you said, hey, I like what we're doing, is there something we can do to make it better? Here's an idea. Yep. Because that's kind of where this came yeah, from. 100%. And, you know, what is it about you that looks deeper in the situations versus a lot of operators, just, oh, 10 people didn't come in today, see you later, we're done. Yep. Yep. Uh, so I think the big thing for me is I've, I've been around the marketing industry. I've got a brother that does a lot of similar type of things. So I understood how that happens a lot of times. So I understand that in marketing, you got to let it season. Yep. Um, and I think especially in small businesses, it's like, oh, if it's more than $100, it's not worth it. Um, and that's idiotic thinking. You'll never survive if you don't spend thousands and thousands of dollars on marketing. Yep. And then especially when I feel like when it comes to agencies and why they get 
dumped oftentimes is because people don't realize that it takes time for people to trust you online and in your out, out of store. You've got to get them to build up that way. And so for me, when we're looking at this situation, I saw that and I was like, you know, our, our program's not going well, but you guys were doing the right actions and showing me that you were doing the right actions in order to get people to come here. And so obviously in my head, I was like, that means we're doing something wrong in between. So they're doing what's going on right, I'm doing what's right in the store, so our message is wrong yep. or our what a, people Call are, action, people are yeah. responding. It's like people will respond if you have the right thing. Yeah. And people have been super responding to this. We've gotten a ton of ton of people from this that have been. It's just fun because who doesn't want free stuff? Yeah. And for us, it's we've got a couple things that usually work and they don't work right now. And so we've just been yeah. trying to figure it out. But I think that was for me. I was like, okay, I know the. I know what you guys are doing, I know what we're doing, and there has to be something to make Gotta it Gotta be work. something metal. Yeah, exactly. And it, and it reminds me of a story when you <laughs> brought that up, and this is a funny story, but it's a great example of exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. I worked in radio out of, out of college. Yeah. And my boss, Kim Weiss, who has a, a marketing firm in Cincinnati, works with a lot of home products, home sure. builders. She was the sales manager, mm -hmm. and this car dealer uh, had called up and was saying, oh, your, your advertising's not working anymore. We're yeah. canceling our advertising. Yep. And there's always this, I always tell people, every advertising works. Yep. It's typically the call to action that might not be working. Yep, exactly. Not the advertising, yep. it's the call to action. And so the, with our station, we had an oldie station and we had a lot of our clients that were oldies listeners. For sure. And oldie stations evolve. There's yep. nothing new coming out. Yep. So every six months they drop off typically six months to two years of music. Okay. And so in this instance, apparently this GM of this car dealership was upset that we quit playing this one genre of oldies. <laughs> and that's why it wasn't working anymore. For sure. And I would never forget this because it was comical. She's like, okay, she called the GM and she said, hey, I'm having somebody bring you, I think it was like 50, $20 bills. Yep. And she's like, I'm gonna go on the radio station and I'm gonna make an announcement that if you go to XYZ car dealership, the first 50 people are gonna get a $20 bill yep. from WGRR. Yep. And she's like, I don't need to tell the owner because I want to prove to him that people are listening and will come, it's just your commercial suck. Yep, exactly. And she got on the radio, I'll never forget it because it was just so funny. She gets on, they get on the radio and they yep. say, hey, it's Rock and Ron WGRR, yeah. go out to XYZ, I know the name of a car dealership, I won't mention it, go out to XYZ <laughs> car dealership, we've got 50 $20 bills for yep. the first 50 people to come by. Yep. Within 30 minutes, this owner's calling the, the <laughs> what are you doing, Kim? What kind of crap is this? I got this, she's like, yeah. well, what do you mean? Well, there's people coming here asking for $20 bills. <laughs> what makes you think it was me? They said they heard on WGR, she said, you just told me our commercials that our station doesn't work. Yep. And if our station doesn't work, that means nobody came and yep. she's like, and he goes, touche. <laughs> and she's like, by the way, the, your, your, your managers have the money, yep. so people are getting it. Yep. But she wanted to make a point that, you know what? It wasn't the fact that we dropped Oldie's music. It wasn't yep. the fact that our, our station didn't work. It was the fact that the call to action and the commercial sucked, which yep. is pretty typical for a lot of car yeah. dealers. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I don't want to argue with that. <laughs> but it's the same with a lot of restaurants. You know, I yeah. had a restaurant the other day that a lot of restaurants are, are scared to give away something on the front end. It's yep. gonna uh, it's gonna dilute my product. It's gonna change my brand. And I'm like, you know what? Not really. I mean, if you're if you're giving somebody something to get something back, yep. it's a push pull relationship. Yeah, for sure. Well, and I think something, I mean, just to kind of whatever the word is, akin to what you're talking about is. I think something that a lot of people are scared to do is it's like everyone has friends, right? And so in this situation, so a little bit different situation, but for us, what we're going to be doing here pretty quick next is having, um, we're going to, we'll see how it works, but I'm going to, I'm going to pull 500 bucks out of the bank and I'm just in, in $1 bills. And on, once we start growing this community a little bit, start saying, Hey, if you share our posts, uh, once, if you share our posts, um, come to the store, we'll give you a dollar. If you show us that you shared the post, I'll give you a dollar. Um, we'll see if it works. But I got a better idea. The, see, there we go. This, you is, ready? this is what we're about. So. It's called the money bag. Okay. I've actually got a video on it. We did it at Burrito Joe's in okay. Cincinnati. What you're going to do is the same thing you talked about, okay. but you're going to tell them when you share the post and you walk in the restaurant, from these times, pick yep. a day that you need business yep, for sure. and a time, you get to reach in the money bag. And the money bag is $500 cash. There's ones, uh -huh. there's tens, there's fifties, there's a hundred. Uh -huh. Perfect, I like that. Uh, and they'll come in, we, we've done it, Burrito Joe's is closed now, they closed because they're in downtown Cincinnati and yep. all the COVID stuff. Yep. But when we did this, we would do it like every four or five months, yeah. and we would do it on a day that was traditionally bad for them, yep. a Tuesday, yep. and we would Always. do it and we'd say, hey, come in 11 to one for lunch, and people would get so stoked, and they'd be like, oh my gosh, if people came in and didn't yep. have the email, they'd say, what are they doing? Yeah, That's exactly. the money bag. Well, how do I yeah. get in there? You gotta join our email list. Yep. And if you join our email list, you'll get notified when the next money bag day is. Yep. And I'd and sometimes we'd say, you know, we'll let you reach in anyways. And they join yeah. the email. Yep. But they would flip out 
I got the idea. We did it at a Cincinnati boat show one year. Uh -huh. I wanted to find a way to make noise. Yep. I gave out 250 fishing rods. I bought them for $1.99 <laughs> from, a, from a company. They were yep. nice little two-piece fishing rods, yeah. two-part. And the top of it had a little flyer that was uh, taped on. It said, you carry this around, and if we see you in the aisle with your Plaps fishing pole, you're gonna get to reach the money bag. And I actually had like five grand in there. Because yeah, we, sure. we did about a yeah, million yeah. dollars in the shell. For sure. So it was all sure. at scale. Yeah. And people, when we would walk through the aisle, they'd come out of the booth. I actually got in trouble kind of because all the dealers got <laughs> mad because everybody was leaving their booth to uh, come to the money bag. For sure. But people would pull money out and flip out and yep. it worked well. But yeah. your idea of the front end, I think you do that and then you do the money bag. Yep, that's perfect. And that'd be like a gold that mine. A lot. That's, once again, that's I think the this is something that I think I've I've noticed just kind of being on both ends of the spectrum and being in marketing with my brother and his company and then being on this end of it is the messaging is usually the problem yep. you know and so it is funny I, I feel like a lot of people are just like if it's not working talk to someone instead of just dropping them I think yep. that's a huge thing especially in the marketing industry or just anyone that's a yep. what's the word an agency of agency. any sort just just talk to them well the, the <laughs> unique thing about and I tell a lot of entrepreneurs and I told yeah. a friend of mine this the other day I said anybody that ever comes in to try and sell you advertising listen to them. Yep. And I said, the reason I say listen to them is they're talking to all of your competitors. Yep. And so if you become friends with them, you're going to get a, you're going to get your hand on the market. I mean, they say your thumb on the market or yeah, you're going to have a pulse, yeah. a pulse. You're yeah. going to have a pulse on the market, uh -huh. but also they see what works. Yep. They hear that this guy did billboards and it works. They hear that this guy did direct mail and it yep. worked. They did radio. They heard what call to action worked. I think too many times businesses dismiss salespeople yep. as trying to sell you something. Yep, so I'm like, yes, they are trying to sell you something. When I call a business, there's my, my goal <laughs> is to my, intent. my goal yeah. is to have a conversation if there's a need and a desire to create a relationship. Yep. But at the same time, I can tell you that most people that are in those positions have 10x the knowledge of that industry than the person buying it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hundred percent. I get that completely. And I feel like for me that's been a huge thing. Um, having bought this, <laughs> you know, recently going from just being a general manager to owning it, um, when you start thinking more about the sales and the marketing instead of just, you know, managing the restaurant, um, it's been fun because that's, with you guys, that was one thing I remember, actually, the reason I called you six or eight months ago, whatever it was, was you gave me a book at the, at the conference that the, I went at to. Pizza the, Expo. Pizza Expo. Pizza Expo. Gave me a book at the Pizza Expo, and it was sitting in my closet, and I was sitting there, I was like, I do not know what to do for marketing, and Matt's book sitting there, a little light on it, you know. Like, so that's like when you were do. a GM then? Uh, uh, yep, that was when I was a GM. Yep, when I was a GM, but then I think I saw your book, yeah, right about that time, about eight months ago. Um, yeah, so that was like, I've had the book for like three years. Everyone keeps every book, right? Keep all yeah. your books. And so I was just sitting in my closet on the shelf. And I was like, oh, yeah, I need to call Matt. I'm having issues with marketing. And so, oh, cool. Call Matt. I'm That's glad you called us. Yeah, it worked great. Restaurant owners, did you know Matt has free online marketing courses that teach you how to successfully market your restaurant? Email support at mattplapp.com to get access to the courses and a free social media content calendar. So, so shifting a little gears from my last topic of the, the conversation here mm -hmm. is going from GM to owner. For sure. There's a lot of general managers, managers out there yep. that want to open their own shop. Yep. What are a couple things you would tell them as things that you found? Like I know you mentioned we were off camera that yeah. you originally were going to create your own concept. Yep. Then you realize, you know what? Somebody's already created a concept. Yep. Let's go within it. What are some things yeah. you would give them as advice? Yeah. Um, one thing that one of my partners told me when before this all happened and went down was he's like, just remember, there's a lot more to know than you think there is. Um, and for at first, I was kind of like, okay, I didn't get that. I was like, okay, I get there's a lot more that I, but I'm willing to learn all those things. Um, but then when I sat down and started thinking about opening my own concept, I just you just forget that, oh yeah, you gotta set up your buyer, you gotta set up your, what, you gotta get in contact with Cisco with a whole different, or whoever it is. Yeah. What, what kind of cheese are you what using? Cheese, yeah, there's just, it's, it's such a big process. And so, and now I, th I think some people have a forte in that, and so if you, if you know that side of it, well, then it's great. But for me, I, I think the advice that I always give is be aware of like what you know and what you don't know, okay. and then be willing to pay people yeah. th for the things that you don't know. And I think that's, for me, that's helped a lot here, you know, so I actually came into this really hot-headed because I thought I was really good at marketing. Um, when I came into down here, then I got so busy and wrapped up in ownership and realized I, I don't have time to do what I want and need to do, slash when I'm running the store, my head is so full of other things that I can't, I can't focus on the marketing the way I need to. And so that was, you know, for one, that's why I reach out. So well, and there's, there's a lot of opportunities there too because it, it's, it's taxes. Yep. It's uh, accounting. Yep. It's legal. I talked yep. to my attorney today. I'm buying a piece of commercial real estate, uh -huh. and I 
I'm dealing with my attorney. I'm yep. not just going on Google looking yeah, up contracts. Exactly. But I'll never forget like when all the first round of PPP stuff started coming out. Yep. And the questions I was seeing in Facebook and LinkedIn groups from operators, and I would ask, do you have an accountant? Well, no. <laughs> like, I'm not a big company. Yep. I mean, I, we, we, we do seven figures. We have, yep. I don't know, 25 or so employees. Yeah. But the first thing I did when I had zero employees, when I had under six figures, <laughs> is I Iron hired account. Scott Mayloff of Mayloff and Associates uh -huh. to do my accounting. I hired yep. Chris Rogers to do my uh, uh, bookkeeping. Yep. By the way, he does restaurant bookkeeping, uh, yep. AEH uh, bookkeeping. You know, I did that because I knew that, yeah, I could mess around with TurboTax and do yeah. my taxes. Yeah. Or I could hire a professional that might save me money. <laughs> yep. And the same with legal, the same with uh, marketing. I think too many times entrepreneurs try to be everything. They wear every hat. <laughs> yeah, well, I think, um, just kind of like go in line with that, I think something for me along that realm of things is like, be honest with yourself. You like, you don't have to know everything. You know, at the end of the day, I feel like you might as well pay someone who already knows it, yeah. then have to learn it yourself. Because as an entrepreneur, we all know we're really, we're quick learners, we're good at learning, um, and we like to learn. Yeah. But I think the problem is remembering that like, you can only do so much in 24 hours a day. Yep. Um, and I do think, especially in the restaurant industry, your 24 hours are taken up very quickly. And, oh, you, yeah. and you forget that, oh yeah, I can I, I can do all these things and I'm capable of it, but we all know our list is 400 things long yep. and marketing ends up on the bottom yep. or your accountant thing ends up on the bottom. But just, just pay someone. Now, I understand in the beginning, it's hard to pay people, yep. but I think that's a huge thing to write into your business plan and anytime you're doing it is, you know, write in who am I hiring? to take care of these problems because I know, being a self-honest person, that I, I'm not gonna have time to do those things. Yeah. So, okay, so there's a couple of things. Okay, last yeah. question, I always end. Airplane mode, your phone has an airplane uh -huh. mode. Does Tyler have an airplane mode? I always ask people at the end of the podcast, what is something you do to put yourself in airplane mode to get sure. out of the four walls, yeah. to maybe focus on family or your personal health? What do you, what do, you do to kind of turn it off? Yeah, for sure. Um, it's funny, I actually forgot this until the last like three or four months. Um, so skiing is my thing. Skiing and snowboarding. I actually have snowboarded longer, but skiing, I picked up and I love it. And I'm going to do it till I'm old because snowboarding hurts. <laughs> um, <laughs> and will continue to hurt forever. Um, but for me, that, I just, for me, I, everyone goes to the mountains for peace. But for me, it's really just getting out, having a breath of fresh air and being like, you know what? There, I have no commitment up here. Yep. You know, my cell phone doesn't have service anyways. So I'm stuck up here. No one can call me. If things blow up, it's still cold up here. You know, <laughs> like I'm still fine. Uh, so yeah, skiing's a huge one for me. I really feel like, um, I don't know, for some reason, like I, family is a very important thing to me. And I was worried about that for a long time being able to ski because I, I just got married five years ago. I wasn't sure if my wife was gonna like skiing. Um, I was kind of a bum, she'll tell you this. I, I, I hated skiing with women. Um, that was because I was back in high school. I just had a lot of bad experiences skiing with oh. women. And so I told her that, the idiot me told her that when we first got married, I was like, I don't <laughs> like skiing with women, I'm sorry. And, and she was like, well, okay, whatever, we're never going skiing. But then push came to the shop and she, I, she made me take her yeah. skiing and now it's our family thing. Yeah. And so for me, it's fun because I get to rejuvenate and have that airplane mode of, we go up to the hills and it's not as rejuvenating for her, but she knows it's rejuvenating yeah. for me. And so that, that's our thing really, honestly. I love skiing, that's, yeah. why, that's why I'm in Utah, I love yeah. skiing. I went that's to Vail, uh, Vail and Keystone with my daughter last month. Uh, yep. I love the fact that she skis. And it's kind of ironic because I, my wife's son and daughter can all ski. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. My son is terrified of it. He thinks he's just gonna, <laughs> he's 16, he's big, tough, strong guy and uh -huh. he can do it but he hates it. Huh? My wife has had too many knee surgeries. She'll get back to it eventually. Yeah. But I love it for my daughter. Like her and I took her boyfriend with us, which yep. was a little different this year, having yep. a boyfriend with us. But <laughs> we went skiing in Vail and Gotta Keystone. Adjust. And uh, just you know, the environment, you're, yeah. it's a great place to cut loose. But you got to have those things to get yourself yeah. away from You got to make time this. for it. I think that's for me. So I'm, I am, and I think a lot of business owners get this way. Is, um, unless I spend money on something, I'm not going to devote time to it. Um, and for me, it's, it's I, so last year, for instance, I only went five times, but for me, a good ski season is 30 or 40. And so, gotta buy that season pass. Yeah, so I, I, last year I didn't buy the season pass because I wasn't sure what was going on, but this year I was like, gotta buy the season pass. Yep. And I bought and I've been 15 times since November. You know? I, that's, so, that's why I bought the uh, Epic Pass this year. Yep. Same thing, I yep. told myself, like last couple of years, I've had opportunities to go skiing with my daughter. Yep. And I, it was always an excuse of why we didn't go. <laughs> And this year, I'm like, you know what? We went to Vail. I'm out here. We're yep. going to hit uh, uh, Big Sky because I have a couple of days there. We're going to uh -huh. hit some other stuff in Colorado yep. in March Especially and April. in this area. Yep. <laughs> you get everything here. Yep. So. 
Yeah, for sure. So that, that's it for me, really. Well, cool. One, so. Well, I appreciate yeah. your time. I appreciate yeah, no you being on the MPTV podcast. Anytime, anytime you want. <laughs> so there yeah, you go. If you're ever in, uh, out here in Highland, Utah, make sure you stop by and see Tyler. But remember what he said. The biggest thing I took away is hire people to help you do what you shouldn't be doing, what you probably can't really do, but more than anything, to help you focus more on this business, what is your core competency, which is running a restaurant. That's all we got. See you later.